What up guys? It's me, no thank you from the future, you may recognize me from the future. You seem you seem new around these parts. Um let me give you a little introduction. The story goes like this. Earth is captured by a techno capital singularity. After the third Indo-Pakistani cyber war, the neo-feudalists took over. Now, most of Europe, including England, although we left the European Union a long time ago, uh, is divided into a, a patchwork of uh, city-states, with London being split down the middle between uh, the free town, the, the free city of New Camelot and, uh, you know, the ancient part of the city, uh, which is still the city of London, controlled by, uh, you know, various megacorp guilds and such like. I've just dipped into this uh, tavern, you know, get some mead, I've got some people chasing after me. Got a couple got a couple lads, you know, and they think they're funny coming after me from the Royal Society for Mimetic Purity. Um, I don't think they'll be able to find me in here though. I don't think they'll come in here, they won't risk it. Uh, you want some you want some mead? I'll write you some mead. Hold on. <clears throat> so come traveller. You wanna to listen to my story? I need, I need someone to tell it to. What did you say you want? Yeah. get one for you as well. Sorry. I'm running kind of low on coin right now. Uh, hence why I'm in this tavern, because it's cheap. There you go. Grab that for yourself. Yeah. So anyway, please allow me to tell you my story. Um, it's a story from back in the day. The first time I ever tried DXM, aka Dextrophomorphan, I believe it is. So me and my friend, we'd read, done a lot of research on dosages and such like. The, you know, you don't get anything with paracetamol, aka acetaminophen, uh, or uh, you don't get anything with guaifacine, guaifacine in it, because those will kill you. So you buy the syrups uh, with just DXM in it. However, so we, we, we're chilling, uh, in, uh, you know, we're chilling, we're chilling, we go into a back street and chug our cough syrup, we were going for a low second to high first plat for the first time, which I think was a okay decision, but no one had informed us that, um, the DXM you can buy in the UK has exorbitant amounts of a chemical called sorbitol in it, which is found in a lot of stuff, and, uh, in high dosages, gives you extremely severe diarrhea. No one had told us this, so um, and we, we'd never found it in our searchings because we'd been looking on American websites and I think American Robitussin doesn't have Sorbitol in it. Uh, so here we are, in the middle of the fucking city, uh, tr trying desperately not to shit ourselves and search for toilets because, uh, while also ridiculously high. So, here we are, the story is set, the, the stage is set for a story. Um, so the first stop was coming down the road, we passed a vape shop and we saw a little toilet sign in there so we're like okay we may as well go in there. Oh by the way I had an acoustic guitar with me at the time. Uh, so we go in there, uh, my friend uh, starts talking to the owner and I go into the back and take a shit and I come out and he goes into the toilet and I sort of sit on the counter playing guitar because I'm not sure that any of this is real at this point. DXM's a dissociative, if you, if you, you don't know, so, uh, yeah. He comes out of the toilet, we're both kind of laughing, the owner looks like he's really suspicious of us, and we uh, go out of the shop, uh, and my friend tells me that uh, while I was in the toilet, he just sat on the counter next to the owner, with the guitar, strummed the chord, then looked at him and said, so you ever done any drugs? <laughs> Which uh, cracked us the fuck up and uh, it was very funny. Apparently the owner said that he, he did uh, 
ayahuasca once in like Mexico or something and he had a really terrible trip and it, it fucked him up for life. So <laughs> that was an interesting experience. Um, and we continued to wander around where we were. Eventually we came to a set of public toilets again. We both sat down in the stools next to each other. And my friend says, so we sit in silence, you know, just complete liquid diarrhea. It was fucking awful. My friend says, uh, it's kind of dead, you know. And I say, what, what is? Pissing out your asshole. That was, I vividly have a memory of this moment because it was not, not fun. It was not, it was, it, it, it's a, there was kind of like a, a, a um, cleanse, you know. <laughs> you feel like you got all the toxins out of your body by putting new ones in. So, um, there we were. Um, eventually we decided that we're hungry, so we decided to stop in for um, Burger King. Uh, so I go into the Burger King and I get myself a boiger, and then um, my friend doesn't get anything because he doesn't have any money, so I get myself a burger, and he, I, I offered to get him something, but he said he was just gonna, he said he had other plans. So um, I get the burger, go back to my table, put the burger down, and suddenly I feel like I need to shit again, so I say, hold on. Watch over this for me, I'm going to go to the toilet. So I use the code for my receipt to go into the toilet. And uh, I'm sitting on the toilet, just sort of contemplating life. And gradually I realise, and uh, gradually I just forget. I just forget that the outside world exists. I'm on this toilet, just sort of staring at the walls for ages. I don't remember really what I was thinking, but I sort of... The, it felt like the world outside of that toilet stool didn't exist. It was just me in the toilet stool, that was it. That was the only, that was the entire universe. And then eventually, I ran, I, I, I remember just sitting there. I wasn't even shitting at this point, I was just sitting there for ages. And then, um, oh shit, the rest of the world exists. And then I just, like, get up, flush the toilet and walk out and go back to my friend and explain to him that I forgot the world existed. That's why I was in there for so long. Eat my cold burger by now. And he says, all right, I'm just going to go across the, to the shops and get a sandwich. And there was a, there's a shop uh, with big windows in the op like right opposite uh, this Burger King, right? So I'm sitting there on the stool facing the window. He puts in some headphones and starts walking along, dancing. Like this. Walks direct, this pace, walks out the Burger King. I watch this all happen across the road without stopping. There's cars going on this road. He's just walking without stopping to the music. Walks into the, walks into the shop. Automatic doors open. I see this through the windows. Walks over to the uh, freezer. Grabs a sandwich. Looks at it. Puts it in his pocket. Turns around. <laughs> walks straight out the shop. Dancing the entire time. Across the road back into Burger King. Then proceeds to eat the sandwich. No idea how he got away with that one. <laughs> but the magic of DXM just prevailed at, at that time. So, um, time to skip forward a little bit. We uh, went back to my friend's house and later decided to go back out after the shits had subsided, but we were mostly in like the afterglow, which many people consider, including myself, the best part of the DXM high is not actually the main peak, but the afterglow. So um, we were going out just as the afterglow was hitting, and uh, we went to the park near my friend's house, and this park has street lights in it. So we brought a speaker along with us, and we were playing um, one of tricks point never, walking down this path when the sun, the sun was completely down. No one else was in this park because we jumped over the fence and it was closed. And uh, there's street lights just in this like slight fog, complete darkness, street lights, one of tricks point never playing on a speaker. And we're just walking along silently, just observing the scene. And it was the most vibey thing of all time. And ever since that day, that park has been nicknamed the Vibey Park because of that incredible vibe. Uh, so we're walking along with Vibey Park down this path and we come to an outside gym equipment place and uh, there's this one machine where you sort of walk but the, it's like the things just sort of swing like that and so I stand on there and I start <laughs> walking and my friend bursts out laughing and because uh, it was a very amusing thing to see and uh, we realize that it's kind of like how you walk in Minecraft so we start playing Minecraft music <laughs> and uh, the world just sort of turns into Minecraft for a bit I'm not really sure how to put that any other way. The world just sort of turned into Minecraft. But there was my C418 was playing on the speaker. We were just walking around like Minecraft people. Um, it was pretty fucking intense, but pretty fucking cool. Um, 
Oh yeah, so let me just skip back a little bit here because I just remembered something else that happened. Um, on the street corner, while we were still in the city, there were some people handing out one pound copies of the Communist Manifesto, uh, which was very funny. Uh, I mean, it was hilarious at the time, but it's also just kind of funny to think back on. I'm not sure why, but they were just standing on a street corner selling these copies of the Communist Manifesto for one pound. So I bought one, uh, but I was trying to read it at one point. I was way too high to understand what was going on. Uh, so uh, eventually, we. <laughs> I'm not sure I should say this a bit, but basically, um, when we were later in the park, of course, the shits hadn't really subsided, they just, they just taken a little break, but when this, the last of my shits came in, and it, it came to attack me, well, obviously I'm in the middle of a park at night time, I had to shit in a bush, sometimes you just gotta shit in a bush, there's nothing wrong with it, it's natural, so I go into a bush to shit and then realise there's no leaves around here, there's nothing to wipe my ass with, except, <laughs> I remember I have the Communist Manifesto in my pocket, so I tear out the first page of the Communist Manifesto, and I wipe my ass with it. And uh, that's how I became a communist. <laughs> so there you go. That's um, about the end of the story. Those are some uh, dodgy looking guys over there. What do you think about them? Yeah. I think it's time for me to get going before these guys spot me. Catch you later, man. Hang in there. You'll be okay.